Okay, it's gonna be a long lecture. So sit down, make a fucking cup of coffee or pour a glass of vodka. The experiment in linguistics. What is the science of linguistics? I mean, the part I'm interested in because linguistics goes also for writing text, for instance. How mind creates a thought, how mind expresses the thought in language, in facial, in a body language. It's all linguistics. You understand? So this is why st- what I study for 40 years as a hobby. Why am I studying linguistics? It goes like this. It goes like this. I'm an artist, right? Did you know I'm an artist? I paint dicks, vaginas. What else do I paint? All kinds of shit. Okay? So, the question is, check it out. Uh, check it out, check it out. So this is a guy who, uh, this is a symbol of reincarnation. You see, in black, there is a, a creature of light walking through the stars and galaxies, and he's carrying a spear and a backpack. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. This, this is the wrong guy. <laughs> Fuck. I'll find the right guy in a minute. Hold on. So this guy is standing and announcing something. Can you tell? He's screaming some shit, and he, it's a man. It's not a woman. Isn't this obvious? Because it has a dick. It has all kinds of waves and lines coming off his head. So it means he's producing voice. And he is also using gestures. Well, we can't see facial expressions because it's so fucking small. So Andrei Bogoslavsky transmitted to you in that drawing certain ideas. Cosmic creature. It's not a human being, it's hanging in space between the galaxies, stars, and he's yelling something. <laughs> Fuck. But what can be fucking yelling some cosmic figure that looks like a human being, and it's not a woman, she's got a dick. Do you understand how much information was in that little fucking drawing? And it looks like a fucking, you know, stick drawing in the sand. It looks like a cage painting from 60 years ago. And that's the point. At one point, humanity, I th- we think it was after explosion of super volcano called Toba, 74,000 years ago, humanity almost fucking died out. The whole fucking planet, the whole Africa and India got covered with six feet of ash. The whole India, six feet of ash. Madagascar, four feet of ash. The whole east coast of Africa, five feet of ash. And people 60,000 years ago lived in Siberia, yeah, in Europe. And they, they got, they got, you know, some ash, I don't know. Oh, nuclear winter for 100 years. No sun for 100 years and uh, phosphorus in the air so we got acid made rain got made out of acid so imagine for the next hundred years it rains fucking acid what happens to your skin you go blind basically i mean all the gazelles in africa fucking die out (laughs) there's nothing to eat so people who survived they started Brave was the first man who ate the first oyster. My second wife was the, is the smartest woman on planet Earth. And she was the wealthiest woman I ever fucked in the ass. She liked it in the ass. <laughs> so we get genetic marker that allows us to digest seafood. Marker, genetic, marked 74,000 years ago. We think that people needed to assemble in bigger... We think people needed to assemble in bigger groups by the coast of Africa because the Central Africa was... I mean, any other place, people fucking died out. And maybe even Homo erectus died out because it didn't have technology we had. But 60,000 years ago, we already had uh, volcanic glass spears. So we were shooting projectiles uh, 50 feet away. So it's easier. 
to penetrate the skin of some fucking gazelle with a little tip of glass. And it goes pretty deep because it's the sharpest glass in the universe. Because the tip of that volcanic glass, when you smack it with a rock, is one atom. One atom penetrates the skin of a gazelle with the speed, of a very, very small uh, arrow, but the speed of the arrow gives it momentum, you understand? 60 miles an hour, I would say it would go one inch deep. Now, all you need to do is to put a little snake poison or any fucking poison, frog poison. There are fucking frogs in the Amazon. If you lick it, you die. All the sperm in your balls die. Your children and your grandchildren die. Your mother-in-law will die back in America if you lick this fucking frog. That's how fucking potent is the poison. Then there is a fucking snail. <laughs> Let me tell you about this fucking snail. I had this snail. I mean, the, the shell when I was a kid. So beautiful. It looked like a fucking, fucking vagina. This big about. I thought I brought it to Poland also. It was like my fucking religion. I had some bizarre artifacts in my childhood. I, I dug out few from a hole in the ground. And I think it was a fucking burial of, of ancient, like, 3,000-year-old burial. Because that's where the burials are, where I'm born. And we kids, we used to go and dig holes in rather flat terrain. But the flat terrain had these natural cliffs that deteriorate in the rain. And it was a clay factory. They were harvesting clay to make, to make bricks, not clay, brick factory. And the fa very famous woman, mother, died in this clay factory, working this clay factory in 1930s. So this little girl became orphaned. Her name is Lydia Ruslanova. She was born in the same small town I was born. And she started singing homeless child, orphan child, in a church where I was baptized in, in the 60s. My grandmother, the insane woman, the one who carried my mother in her belly, was pregnant, six months pregnant, and she went to the greatest battle of Stalingrad, the greatest battle of Second World War, where Hitler ordered not to take prisoners. And Stalin said, we don't have food for prisoners, dude. So during the battle, everybody dies. And my grandmother was pulling wounded soldiers, six months pregnant, and my mother was born in February. Look at the calendar. A few months later, it was General Pauls who surrendered half a million Germans because they were fucking eating each other. They had no food. So they surrendered, and Stalin said, okay, we're not gonna kill them. We send them to Siberia, we need to dig gold, <laughs> because we need to pay Americans for those fucking Sherman tanks. Oh, fuck, I don't have any money, Stalin said. Oh, fuck, I'm not even a drunk, Stalin said. I don't drink, I don't fuck anybody. I mean, I fuck everybody. I mean, I don't fuck them, I just fucking kill them, because I can't fuck. That's what Stalin, Stalin said, that's how he was. Okay, I don't want to talk about Stalin. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? What the fuck did you ask? Why are bros upside down? Okay. So, the linguistic experiment is very simple. Very fucking simple. Page got destroyed with 66,000 followers yesterday. I don't know why. TikTok doesn't tell you we're gonna fuck you up. I mean, sorry we destroyed your page. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. That's fine, I don't give a shit. But I started this experiment by writing something upside down and questioning how many people do really read the shit. Is it only the ones that don't speak English and they need to read because they don't understand the spoken language? Are Americans <clears throat> gonna pay attention to upside text because the dictating software fucks up my doesn't pick up my accent and it fucks up my my text my speech and it's funny the way they're dictating words i'm looking at it say, eh? i didn't say that 
So it's funny. And my followers have been telling me for five years, it's funny. So I turn it upside down to see how many people will pay attention.